and give a testimony. And uh, I can see where God has really just poured over this person and and allowed her to come to a place where she's never been. Amen. And this is just the beginning of her brand new life and journey with Jesus. It is. It's just the beginning. She's just taken the top off what God wants to explode. Amen. So, Brenda, I'm going to ask you to come and, oh, and you just give your testimony tonight. Oh, thank you. Let's welcome Brenda. <laughs> I know that this is a real stretch for Brenda, but that's okay. We've just made her an official elastic band. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to keep on stretching you, Brenda, dear. Hallelujah. Yeah, you're going to do just fine. Thank Take you. Thank you. Well, where do you start? Um, this started... Um, the weekend that we were to no, no, the camp. No, oh, yeah, I'll take that. There you go. And you hold that right there. Right, 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 <laughs> right up there so that they can hear you. Every, every single person down there at the very back, and all the people in Trenton. <laughs> <laughs> um, this journey started the weekend that we were at Prairie Tree. Um, we were singing, and uh, the, on Saturday afternoon they were singing a song that was very familiar to me. All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. Um, I will ever love and trust him, to all his presence daily live. And the chorus was, I surrender all. Well, I couldn't sing that because it wasn't true for me. And so I just sat there and I kind of looked down and that was it. After the service on Saturday afternoon, Pastor came over to me and she was talking to me. And she said that you need, the only three words that I can remember was number one, um, attitude, Number two, um, stronghold and walls. And I just looked at her like she had two heads. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been in, in church all my life. Uh, I started out at the Salvation Army. And I um, went from there when they closed in Glasgow. I was in a home. And uh, when I did come home after two years, seven months, um, my husband said to me, well, what are we going to do? We're not going to keep on going to two churches. He would walk to the Second Baptist in the morning, and he'd get a drive down to church in Ashley in the night. And I said, well, I, I, I want to go to church in Ashley because they have two services. And that's what I was used to. So anyways, we, we did. And, we uh, we joined the church, and um, I got baptized on my on my birthday because I never been baptized before. Um, but yet it didn't make a big difference to me. Like I go in the army, it's called the mercy seat. In our church, it's called the altar. And you'd go, and somebody would come up and say, what can I pray for you about? Well, you'd say, um, the kids, the grandchild, uh, I'm not reading my Bible. That would be it. But I never, ever got to the root of the problem until pastor spoke those words and I just said I'm not ready yet um, so she said well she prayed with me and we went and got her supper and um, 
that was all that was said. So she said, I'll keep praying for you. And I said, okay. And um, this tells me. Um, I kept on going to church, my own church. When they stopped having services on Sunday night, I was lost. So I started coming over here because I could walk here. I didn't need to drive. And um, I don't know whether any of you know about walls. Okay, a wall is not something that you can see. A wall is something that you put up yourself to keep people from getting to know the real you. And I've had walls around me for years and never nobody ever said that. And when she when pastor said that, I kind of looked at her like, really? <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I kept on going to coming here and going to my church. Um, I got notes here, but I'm not using them. Um, I, um, I raised my hand, my arm, when people raised their arm. Um, I read the Bible in services that it was read. And it looked like on the outside that everything was going fine. But since those words were said to me, Deep down, I know the work. And uh, I never felt convicted or anything until last Sunday morning, our pastor and his wife was away to a past, pastor's spouse retreat. And somebody else took the service. And they spoke from Judges 6, 1 to 11. And then from 20, Five to twenty-nine, and so I looked it up, and then when she started her discern part, she um, spoke about. Okay, I don't have my Bible here. Uh, spoke about um, the man who was in a cave. And he couldn't get to anybody, and anybody couldn't get to him. Um, I I thought I was going to have ten minutes, but I guess she changed her mind. You go right ahead. <laughs> Did I get my bottle? Yes. It's about Gideon, and it says, Again the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites, because the power of the Midian was so oppressive, and the Israelites prepared um, shelters for themselves in the mountain, cliffs, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Mennonites, that one? Any Amalite? Any Amalites? Yeah. Okay. Any Amalite, whatever. And other Eastern people invaded the country. 
they camped on the land and they ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep nor cattle nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count the men, and it came, and the camels, they invaded the land to ravage it. Um, when the Israelites cried to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a prophet who said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I snatched you from the power of Egypt, from the hand of all your oppressions. I broke them from before you and gave you their land. I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you live, but you have not listened to me. Okay, and then, then we read down to verse 23. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but the Lord said to him, Peace, do not be afraid. You are not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, the Lord is peace. To this day it stands. Um, Then, towards the end of a song, 
I went up to the altar. Um, nobody came to me, so I was able to pray to God myself because I knew what the problem was. Um, there was somebody came and put their hand on my shoulder, like that, and they were talking words, but I couldn't hear them because church had been let up. And um, so there was a lot of talking and whatnot going on. So I couldn't hear this. But when I was still praying, I stood up and I seen who it was. And uh, she said, anything I can pray about? I said, yeah. She said, what? That I'll be true to Jesus. And that I'll let him change my life the way he wants to. Um, so she had a prayer with me, and then after that we went home, just as usual. But I knew in my heart there was a difference in me. Because when I had the wall up, I would do my philosophy, and then I'd get into games, and games, and games, and games. Until after midnight, one o'clock, the latest it was was 2.30, one morning before I turned off the, key, the computer. And I knew that wasn't the way I should go. When I was in church and people raised their hands, I raised mine. I read the Bible and I was in services where the Bible was read. But behind the walls, where nobody could see, I didn't read my Bible. I stopped praying. And I stopped trusting the Lord. So, because I knew what the problem was, because pastor, I was able to pray about it. And I got victory. Amen. Amen. And uh, she told me, well, if you give it to the Lord, you're going to feel different, you're going to feel lighter. I just kind of looked at it. But I do feel different. Yes. And I do feel lighter. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, anybody ask me how I was, I'm hanging in. That would be my reply. Anybody ask me today how I am? Five things. <laughs> um, in the wall, you wouldn't believe the way I was living. I didn't go to bed in my bed for two months and a half because I was going to vacuum and I put everything up on my bed. I didn't get it done, so everything stayed on my bed. Even Charlie wasn't aware of what was going on. Until one day, I was in a hurry to get the van to go to New Hope. And I didn't have time to take out my bed, uh, blanket and pillow. And I never thought about it when I came home. And he said, what's that doing there? Um, I slept here. Why are you in your bed? Well, I got stuff all over it. And I said, I'm going to go sleep here anyways because I take a sleeping pill. So it didn't bother me. Then every, after that, for the next week, are you back in your bed yet? Not yet. Are you back in your bed yet? Not yet. And I get tired of him asking if I'm back in my bed yet. So I went up and I lifted everything off the bed. So the bed was clear. Now, I didn't know how long those blankets and whatnot had spit on the bed. And I had to change it. Well, in order to change it, you have to be able to go around the bed like so. On this side of the bed that I didn't use, there was stuff from the floor to the windowsill of different things. I had to move that also. So I put 
put um, clean sheets on and clean pillowcases and stuff the other ones in a pillowcase to wash at a later time. Um, this week, things have really changed. Yes. Now, people say the Lord talks to them. Uh, I've never heard the Lord talking to me, but I get thoughts. And because I tried to make my score better on the philosophy, um, the thought came to me, be true to yourself. And I thought, uh-huh. So anyways, on Sunday night, I did it once. It didn't matter what the score was or anything, I just did it once. I checked to see how I did, and I checked the computer off Sunday night. Um, Monday or Tuesday, I had devotional books, and I didn't know where they were, so I had to go look for them. Now, I will say that I'm blessed because I've got good devotional books. And um, so I found them. And I'm doing 40 days in the Word. The whole church is doing it. And we have about 10 small groups. Well, I didn't do my homework. You're supposed to do one every day. I didn't do it. And so it went on Tuesday night, and I thought I was going to get picked up. But there was a miscommunication. So I waited, it starts at 6.30. I waited there until 25 after 6. And I said, uh-oh. So I go in and I call Charlie. Could you do me a favor? What's that? Could you take me down to church? I, I had no job. So I'll be there as soon as I can. So bless his heart, he came, he drove me to church. On the way, he said, I was supposed to be at a meeting at 6.30. I said, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay, he said. I'll go in late, just like I had to do. <laughs> um, we watch a video, and um, from Rick Warren, and I was late for it, so it was partly all done. And I remember him saying, when you do devotions to God, you don't have to keep at it for a long period of time. You can take a break, and later in the day, go to your quiet spot and continue. Well, I live home. So, I mean, any place I go, it's my quiet spot. Okay. So, I would start it in the morning before I get up out of bed. And then I'd look at my watch. And then I'd say, I'll get back to you. And then I'd pray. And then I'd go downstairs and go about the day. And then before supper time, I'd be back upstairs finishing my devotional. Um, I called the pastor this afternoon and I said, this is taking longer than I'm supposed to. So I, I was going to read something and I cut it up. Um, Saturday, like Wednesday afternoon, I got a call from the pastor and she said, what are you doing? I said, not much. She said, well, I, I'd like to meet with you and talk with you to find out what's been going on. I said, well, your schedule's a lot busier than mine. You tell me when. Yeah. And uh, she told me, I said, okay. I never changed, nothing. I just went the way I was. And we went to Tim Hortons, and uh, she asked me about the beige. And I said, really? 
But she said, I'd like to know. I said, all right. So I made it, maybe told her about five, six things. That was just the top of the cake. And um, so, anyways, I could not get free of all the baggage. Anytime I went to the altar, I never prayed about my baggage. Because I, I never knew really what was the problem. And I thank God that we have a pastor here who is very much in touch with the Lord. Amen. And the Lord directed her to have prayer with me. And I never go into the prayer room. Last Sunday night was the first time I did. Hallelujah. And I went back in tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And tonight, I, um, I even said a prayer. Yes. Short one, but a prayer. <laughs> um, my husband passed away on July, June the 1st, 2014. Now his side of the bed was there, my side of the bed was here. So I never looked up on his table or anything until Saturday morning. I uh, went over to the table and he had three bookmarks there. And the one that was underneath another one was the one that caught my attention. On the back it says, who, who, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They shall soar up on wings like eagles. Isaiah 40, 31. Amen. Now, I was going to close with this, but I'll read it, but I'm not closing with it. Um, it's called the determination. God has designed and empowered us to be like the eagle. Each day it's possible to reach another unknown height. Like the eagle, we can choose to keep our eyes on the heights. Slowly, steadily, with determination, we can pass the sparrow's nest. Yes. And that really spoke to me. I mean, as you can see, brand new was never out of the, the package. And when I looked on the table, he had scotch tape, he had everything, pins, things that I would go looking for when I needed them. And I, I went beside my bed and I prayed and I said, thank you Lord, this is your timing. It wasn't before, but this is your timing. Um, You'll notice that tonight I never raised my hand. I sat there like this, or clap. Um, I want to be genuine for Jesus. I don't want to be copying off somebody else or because it looks good and gives you a good impression. Um, this morning we sang a song in church And the chorus of it was saying two or three times, and I thought, wow. So I wrote it down, and this is what I'm closing with. Take my heart and form it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. And that is my testimony from now on. Hallelujah. Brenda, that's amazing. Yes. Many of you know Brenda, and uh, many of you know her her life. This is a big step for Miss Brenda, mm -hmm. and this is only the beginning. Amen. Will you please join with me in prayer as I pray over Brenda tonight? Heavenly Father, I do indeed thank you. I do indeed thank you for release, Father God. 
And I thank you for the past. I thank you that the past is the past and Brenda no longer has to live there. And she doesn't have to worry about what things used to be, but she needs to look forward and keep her focus completely on you. And knowing that each day is a brand new day, every day is filled with your mercy and your grace, and every day is purposed for Brenda, Father God. So I thank you for what you're about to do in her life. And I know that this is the beginning of many testimonies that she will be able to give, that she will be able to speak about how you came in, Father God, and swept over her and picked her up and set her a flight, yes. Father God, where you want her to be. Yes. So, Lord, I thank you. This church agrees with her tonight, Father God, in knowing that you are going forward and that all days ahead of you are planned and purposed by Jesus. Amen. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 Bless you. Bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Well, that is a big step. Brenda, here's your Bible, dear. That is a big step for you. It was. Yes. <laughs> and you know what was nice? She was obedient. Yes. Yeah. She was obedient. I knew at uh, retreat when I spoke to her, she wouldn't look at me. She kept looking down. And I tried to look, and she wouldn't look at me. But that's all right. I don't give up. <laughs> I just kept pressing in. And then when I said uh, I would pray for her, I think she kind of thought, oh, yeah, okay. But when I bring something to the Lord, I'm bringing it to the Lord. Amen. I wanted a change in her life. I didn't want her living under the chains of the past. Yes. I wanted them broken in the name of yes. Jesus, Amen. and I wanted her to be free. Amen. And you know what? That's the kind of pressing in we need. That's the season of life where we are. And so consequently, our God is a good God. So now, if you'll bear with me for a little bit, I will just bring you my message, and uh, 